Today is about fish, fish abundance, fish abundance. We were looking a bit there, uh, a little bit there, and blank here when I say that. Um, it's far from waiting. It's far from waiting. So um, I'm going to read you the scripture first, and then we can talk about this fish abundance. Uh, so this is from John. This is uh, from the message. It's a different Bible we used to. I thought we'd I really want to us to get hold of this today. Um, after this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Tiberius Sea, the Sea of Galilee. This is how he did it. Simon, Peter, Thomas, nicknamed Twin, Nathaniel, or Nathaniel, from Cana in Galilee, the bro brothers of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Simon, Peter announced, I'm going fishing. That's what he said. He said, I'm going fishing. The rest of them replied, we are going with you. They went out and got in the boat. They caught nothing that night. When the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach. But they didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to them. He said, good morning. Did you catch anything for breakfast? They answered, no. He said, throw the nets off the right side of the boat and see what happens. They did what he said. All of a sudden, there were so many fish in it, they weren't strong enough to pull it in. Then the disciple, Jesus loves, said to Peter, it's the master. When Simon Peter realized that it was the master, he threw on some clothes, for he had stripped from work, and drove, drove and dived in or dove into the sea. The other disciples came in my, by boat, and they weren't far from land, a few hundred yards or so, pulling along a full net of fish. When they got out of the boat, they saw a fire laid with fish and bread cooking on it. Jesus said, bring some of the fish you've caught. Simon Peter joined them and pulled the net to the shore. 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the net did not rip. Jesus said, breakfast is ready. Not one of the disciples didn't ask who you are. They knew it was the master. Jesus then took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus had shown himself to the disciples since being raised from the dead. Since being raised from the dead. Wow, wow, fish galore, actually, isn't it? So what's all this about? What is it all this about? What is this teaching us today? Or does it help us today? Well, we can c conclude much from the story. Well, no, it's not a story, it's an event. Let's not mix that up. It's not a story, a made-up fact fictional story. This is an event. This is an event. Yeah. You know, we can get from it fishing for souls, we can get obedience, grace, abundance, to name but a few. You know, first, the resurrection lets us know that Jesus is the only one that can provide everything we need. The Bible reads, Jesus spoke to them, good morning, didn't catch anything for breakfast, and they answered no. He said, throw the nets on the right side of the boat and see what happens. They did what he said. All of a sudden, there were so many fish in it, they weren't even strong enough to pull it in. Even though Peter and some of the other disciples had gone back to their own occupation, which we believe, we don't know, but we believe that so, so they could feed their physical anger. Jesus Christ wanted them to know that not only could he fulfill their physical needs, but he is also able to fulfill the deepest spiritual needs and desires. That's what it's about. That's a short part of it. Is my, is my sermon over today now? Is my word over? No, it's not. You haven't got away that easy. You haven't got away that easy. But I want to explain it in a bit more depth than that. A little bit more depth. See, I believe they have become disheartened. They've become disheartened. And so we can become disheartened. We can become disheartened, you know, in our walk with Christ. 
And sometimes we even feel like we want to give up. You know, it's so easy sometimes to, to, to feel, ah, oh, I want to give up. You know, even give up in our life, even give up in, in our ways. We feel we are not making progress in our lives. We may feel we're not making progress in our ministry, in our relationships even. Well, I want to look at the three, three of the subjects we see in this account that will not only put us on, back on track, but encourage us to strive forward in our walk with Christ. We all want to be encouraged to walk in our walk with Christ, don't we? We all need that encouragement sometimes. We all need it. Yeah? Peter needed it. Yeah? He needed that encouragement. And what I want to focus on this morning, what I want to focus us on this morning is obedience, grace and abundance. And obedience, grace and abundance we can find in this story. And we're going to be looking at that this morning. Now I know the significance of the fish in the net, you know, can be about the Great Commission. And, but I believe God was also, in, he was encouraging his disciples from being disheartened, yeah. Peter and the rest of the disciples Peter had let Jesus down take a step back to, to, the, to, to the cross when he denied Jesus three times he denied Jesus three times Jesus was now resurrected but they were waiting as the song says waiting for you they were waiting surely Jesus John was feeling disheartened from perhaps letting him down, disheartened in himself, and perhaps he was so disheartened that he's that not being with the Lord now. The Lord had gone, and, and they, hadn't, they weren't as they were before. Perhaps he was just feeling disheartened, and perhaps he thought, well, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? What can we do? And for whatever reason, and we don't know the reason, uh, Peter said, let's go fishing. Some say it's because it was his occupation before. He was a fisherman before. If we remember, Jesus met him as a fisherman. Because Jesus had said to him on the shores, come, I will make you fishers of men. He had met with them previously. But after all, whatever the disheartened was, he had said, let's go fishing. Or he says, I'm going fishing. And the other said, we are coming with you. We are coming with you. But they had toiled all night. I'm not a fisherman, so I can't give you a story. I, the only fishing I've ever done is with a net on the canal. And that is for little minnows. Yeah? But they tell me that fishing is a, a hard job. And they had toiled all night. And they'd been pulling in weeds. And they'd been pulling their nets in. And not one fish, not one fish, they had caught. How often do we try to do our own thing in church? Try to do our own thing in our lives? And yet we fail so much, perhaps. Perhaps we have run ahead of a tried adventure. You know, we get so excited. We are going to see loads. I, I, I remember when I first opened this church and um, Pastor Bruce Page was here, an American, and we had given out loads of leaflets. And they said, they were so excited to say, I can't wait to see how many in church on Sunday. And you know what? We had a handful of four people who were already in church. Disheartening, isn't it? Disheartening. Disheartening. But, you know, we should not, we should not, not get downheartened. Because God is with us. Jesus is there. Jesus was there on this boat. He is there. <coughs> We've tried to do things our own way, perhaps, and not been fruitful. Do I feel for these disciples? Yes, I do feel for these disciples. Do I feel for you? Me? Yes, I do feel for me. 
on times. See, after Jesus' crucifixion, the disciples must have been left rudderless and disorientated. They must have been disorientated. I'm going fishing, he says. Some believe that Peter was wrong in saying this. That it was a disobedient act of Peter. But we're not in Peter's position, are we? We're not there in any position. And sometimes we, people are not in our position. And we say, it's okay for you. You're not going through what I'm going through. So Peter does what he knows best. He goes fishing. He goes out fishing. What he knows best to do. Others believe Peter had disobeyed. You know? There was no command of Jesus. Who was, you know, and... But, but Peter was practical. However, whatever the reason was, they were going to go fishing. And it was fruitless. And it was fruitless. But do you know what? Obedience saved the day. Even though some people say that was, they were disobedient, they now become obedient in the next section. Why do I say that? Because Jesus appeared on the shore and said good morning. But they did not recognize Jesus. So this man comes up and says, Oi, good morning. What have you caught today? Have you caught anything for breakfast? And they say, no. And he says, go, put your nets on the right hand side. How do you think Peter was feeling then? He's a fisherman. He's a fisherman. They don't know it's Jesus. They don't know it's Jesus. They are an experience. And we know as when Peter met Jesus walking along the shore. You know, they were casting fishing nets. And Jesus said to him, follow me, I'll make fishers of men. But this is not a person they recognize. Can you imagine somebody coming into you and telling you after being tired of being out in the boat all night with your fishing rod or with your net and not catching anything or walking down the canal and with your little net trying to catch minnows for four hours and you've not caught anything and somebody comes to you and says put your net over there mate you'll go catch some people might say just on your bike mate some people might just say I'm not doing this on your bike but Peter doesn't say that. Peter doesn't say that. Peter does what he says. Why does Peter do what he says? Why do, do they do that? What would you say? Perhaps I am a experienced fisherman, caught no fish, and you want me to go out and put my net over the right hand side? That is a polite way of saying it to the man. Perhaps we would say, yeah. Amazingly, they did not question Amazingly, they did not question, but obeyed this man. See, there was complete obedience here to Jesus, even though they didn't know it was Jesus. Perhaps they thought, we have nothing to lose. Perhaps they thought, well, do you know what? We've been out there all night. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> we just go, go out and just do it because just to satisfy, I've got nothing to lose. You know, I might get one or two fish. Uh, let's do what this guy says. Let's do what he says. He knows better than me. I'm an experienced fisherman. He's not. Yeah? You know, perhaps they had nothing but to listen and do what the person says. They thought it was the right thing. But they had a failure from before. See, we can learn from this. We can learn from this. We can learn that when we go and do things on our own steam and within our own resources, that we fail. We can fail. We need Jesus. We need God in our lives. What have we got to lose? We've got not a lot to lose, but a lot to gain. If you're listening today, you've got a lot to gain by listening to what Jesus says. By coming to Jesus. 
we have got a lot to gain. See, Jesus says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I am him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And that's the same with us today. Without Jesus in our lives, we can do nothing. We may think we can do things, but we can do what we, we can put big lights on this church, yeah? We can have them flashing in and out, like in America. Have you seen the drive-in churches? You know, we can put big arrow flashing, we can put beacons, we can do what we like. But if Jesus is not in it, it's all in vain. It's all in vain. And that's the same with us. Sometimes we want to do things our way. You know, this was Peter's way. Let's go fishing. Yeah? Drops the net down against nothing. Are we obedient? Are we willing to try Jesus? Or are we trying to do it alone? Have we anything to lose by being obedient to God? Of course not. But we've got a great amount to gain. A great amount of gain. We have eternal life through obedience to believe in Christ. Amen? That is eternal life. For John 11, 21 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live forever even though they will die. Wow. We will live forever. What was the result of these fishermen? Well, the result at this moment in time is when they put the net down on that right hand side, as that chap he told them to because they didn't know it was Jesus, they had fish galore. So many fish that they couldn't pull them up. Why did they number the fish? Well, we're not going to go into that. Uh, but there was fish galore. There is grace for these fishermen. The net is now full. We have grace through God. Grace is love that cares and stoops and rescues. John Stott says that. That's a quote from John Stott. Did his disciples deserve such a catch? Well, no. They didn't deserve it. They didn't deserve it. They had gone on their own way. But guess what? God is of grace. And it was a type of grace of God coming alongside them and saying go put your nets over the right hand side and you will have fish galore you will have abundant fish they didn't deserve it because they were off on their own do we deserve what Jesus has for what each of us believers of course not we don't deserve it we don't deserve it. That's why Jesus, not only did he die on the cross for us, he continues to bless us. His grace never runs dry. Never runs dry for you. I want to tell you that today. If you are struggling, if you are struggling with something, give it to God. Because his grace never runs dry. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ, writes Paul. Philippians 4.19 Jesus tells us, seek first the kingdom of God and all things, all things shall be added up to you. But first we need to seek him. That's what he says. That's what he says. Wow, if we put our net where he tells us to, we too will have, fi will have fish abundantly, church. Ah, make whatever you want out of that. But we will have fish abundantly. Seriously. Seriously. Are we listening to God? Are we listening to God? Or are we doing things our own way? Our own way. Not just in church, but in our lives. But in our lives. See, as soon as the net was full of fish, it clicked. Yeah? This is not an ordinary man. This is not an ordinary man. That guy out there, isn't he? he's not an ordinary guy. That is Jesus. 
That is Jesus. Paul puts on his outer robes and he actually dives into the sea. He can't wait to go and see Jesus. He can't wait. He's so excited to get to shore that he jumps into water. Now it doesn't say whether he gets there first. It says he jumps into the water and then the others follow in the boat. It doesn't say whether he got there first. But he recognises it is Jesus. Who could do such a thing? Who can give you abundance? I did tell you my my daughter, and I'm going to say it again, uh, not because I'm bragging about anything or or boasting about anything, because I want you to know how it works, uh, how God can influence um, situations. Natalie, my daughter, needed a big house, house. not big house, but she needed to move. She will kill me for saying Natalie because she called Ali these days. So Ali... um, it was living up in the valley um, nice place but the house was far too small uh, you know she got five children and, and a stepdaughter and they were living in a small be- three bedroom house they was on top of each other literally on top of each other in fact Ben had to do two beds and one across the top so literally on top of each other um, we prayed we prayed. They were looking for an house. One of their houses fell through that they went for. They were distorted from that. They were absolutely um, devastated. Some of you jumped into the house first. And we prayed. We prayed for we, about four weeks, Mike, out the back for them to have an house. We prayed for four weeks in our prayer. And do you know what? God gave them such an house. It's a mansion. It was, a, it was fish abundantly. Yeah? It's an house that has got, well, so many rooms, you can get lost in it. You can get lost in it. A a, a standalone house in Pontypool Town Centre, and you can get lost in it. God provided, and He will provide for you. He will provide for you. It was fish galore. You know, not only did he die on the cross for us, he continues to bless us. He continues to bless. I want to encourage us with that today. I want to say, if you take nothing else home, I want you to take home, but he will bless you. He will encourage you. Yeah? See, it clicked. He recognized it was Jesus. Who else could do this? Who else could do this? It's like turning the water into wine, isn't it? He must have gone back and thinking, well, hang on, there's only one person I know who can do this. So he dives into the water. He's so excited. He was disobedient, you may say, for the fishing. But he was disobedient earlier on, if you look at Peter. Because Peter denied the Lord. And yet the Lord blessed him. Sometimes we wrong we do wrong but the Lord doesn't count that the Lord wants wants to bless you he wants to bless us see sometimes we are prepared to do some work the disciples had to row back to sea they did, he didn't just give it to them have you noticed he didn't just say use the fish look in your nets now and you've now got 153 fish he said the man said go yeah and put the net over the right hand side so they had to do some work they had to do something sometimes we've got to do work you know sometimes in the church for the church to grow we have got to do something we've got to do something to actually um, you know God says he says in Matthew 28 go make disciples he says it to us all Sometimes we've got to be willing to row the boat and willing to cast a net. Then we see the miracle. Then we will see the miracle. See, or do we just sit and wait? Yes, we do wait for God, and that's a bit on the song, because God wants us to wait. Yeah? He doesn't want us to run ahead. But sometimes we have got to do what he tells us to do. We've got to be good listeners. 
It means to be a doer of the guidance with the guidance of God. And we are told to go make disciples, cast a net and catch a fish. But it also means to trust Jesus in our life and cast our burdens from, to him for he cares for us. Cast our burdens to him because he cares for us. But that's not just the end of this account, is it? That's not just the end. We only part way through, aren't we? Jesus said, next Jesus is there on the beach, behind the barbecue, saying, guys, breakfast is ready. Breakfast is ready. Let's barbecue a couple of these fish. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's have fellowship together. Let's, let's have, you know, you've done the work, yeah, we've, we've now got the fish, come and, come and relax. Come and sit with me. I'll do the work. Notice, he tells them breakfast is ready. So that means he is cooking them breakfast. He is cooking them breakfast. It's a bit like washing the, the feet, isn't it? a bit like that they had seen that and now Jesus is cooking them breakfast can you imagine being on that beach a beach perhaps Barry Island with a barbecue Jesus there cooking you fish and bread the Lord has breakfast ready for them and that's a sign of his grace another sign of his grace and provision Wow, not only does he advise where to fish and provides, he then serves them breakfast. He barbecues fish and gives bread. They dine with him. They dine with him. Someone said Jesus Christ wants to let us know that only he can supply everything we need from something as simple as providing fish for breakfast to something as portable and it's important as winning souls to him. My question today, are you prepared to cast the net on the right hand side? Amen.